Unfortunately, any time we put anybody on a mechanical ventilator, that person can develop a ventilator-induced lung injury. There are a couple of pressures we can measure, one of which is plateau pressure, plateau pressure being a surrogate for the alveolar lung pressure. By measuring and monitoring this pressure, we can monitor for the development of ventilator-induced lung injury. So where is this plateau pressure on the T1 and how do we measure it? Here we are ventilating somebody on the T1. To find plateau pressure, just go into your monitoring tab, number three, and here you'll see plateau pressure and there's a value. But this is a simulator. In real life, if we were to do this, what would we see? A whole lot of this. Not very useful. Some of you might be saying, you need to do an inspiratory hole first before you get a plateau pressure. And you're right, so let's investigate this. So here we have a pressure scalar. Pressure over time. We've got a couple of pressure waveforms here, a couple of mandatory volume control breaths. This breath here, we've performed an inspiratory hold. So the reason that you need an inspiratory hold is that any time there's gas flowing through the system, the system being ventilator, tubing, tracheal tube, airways, that flow of gas exerts a force. That force exerts a pressure on the system. The pressure on the system is your peak inspiratory pressure. That pressure we're not interested in. We want to know the pressure within the alveolar lung level. So that's the plateau pressure. So by performing inspiratory hold, we get rid of that gas. By getting rid of that gas, we know what the pressure is within the lungs. So when we press the button, we're telling the ventilator, when I press the button, I want you to reach your breath target here volume. Once you've reached your breath target, turn off the flow of gas. So no flow in or out. When there's no flow, the pressure settles to a plateau, hence the name plateau pressure. And then when you let go of the button, you tell the ventilator you can now cycle into expiration. Note that when you do an inspiratory hold, do it for only half a second to a second, because doing a long inspiratory hold will decay your plateau pressure and give you a wrong number. So here we're going to perform an inspiratory hold. The inspiratory hold button is on the very front of the T1. When you're ready, press and then release the inspiratory hold button and you'll get a plateau. Press your freeze button once, maybe twice, then use your jog wheel to scroll over to your pressure waveform over where it plateaus, making sure at that point down the flow scalar it's reading zero. And if that's the case, this should be your plateau pressure, 24. In practice, when we do inspiratory holes to obtain a plateau pressure on the T1, what we usually find is that the plateau pressure is the same or just one or two below that of the peak inspiratory pressure. Now that doesn't really make sense because if that was the case, that would mean the resistance in the system is zero, one or two. And then when we look at the resistance measurement, it might say seven, eight, nine. So what's going on here? Remember, when we press the inspiratory hold button, we're telling the ventilator, on that breath, when it reaches its target, hold, no more gas, and when I release the button, you can cycle into expiration. So in pressure control mode, the pressure target is pressure. So when I press the inspiratory hold button, it reaches that pressure target, pressure, holds, and then cycles into expiration. So virtually, the peak inspiratory pressure becomes a plateau pressure which doesn't give us any information at all. So the T1s, even though it says they do volume controlled modes, volume controlled ventilations, the Hamiltons don't do traditional volume controlled modes. All the breath modes are pressure controlled. So we can't do a plateau pressure on a pressure controlled mode. So therefore we can't find a plateau pressure on all the modes on the Hamilton T1. Another thing to consider too is that you need zero flow to obtain a plateau pressure. So you need a valve, a valve to shut the gas off so there's zero flow. Now the Hamilton T1s are a valveless system, so that makes things harder too. So if that's the case, how do we get a plateau pressure on our T1s? Thank you for sticking it out this far through the video. The next thing I'm going to show you is a little bit scary. But if you watched my compliance video and have a calculator, afterwards you'll be able to do a plateau pressure. So what's this scary thing? 
to calculate plateau pressure, take your tidal volume, divide it by static compliance, and add total PEEP. Remembering to grab these values from when the patient's passive. Now, apart from this being the only true way to get a plateau pressure on the T1, it also makes us think of another important aspect of mechanical ventilation, which is driving pressure, which we'll talk about in the next video.